Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and share the link and don't forget to download the video as soon as we finish. Today we are going to answer, well, not answer really, I mean it's a joke. The Sheikh of the Dummies, Abdul. This Abdul is very smart, I have to admit. And because he is so smart, I invite him to have a conversation with me. At the end of the conversation, either him will turn into hummus or I will turn into hummus. And you can bet on that. Now, let us see what this hummus is trying to say. You know, there is many, they are against Christmas. And even some, they claim to be Christians and they are against Christmas. But look, Obama is against Christmas. Atheists against Christmas. Muslims against Christmas. Jews against Christmas. I mean, who's left? Look, anyone who don't like Christ is against Christmas. Anyone who hate Christ is against Christmas. So those who join the hate monger against Christ and they claim to be Christians, obviously you are joining the force of evil. Because nothing evil in Christ. This is number one. You see, when somebody do something, and people they claim it's pagan, etc. Is it the question first? Is is it Christmas as good or not? What do people do in Christmas? Now, somebody might say to me, party. This is nothing to do with the Christmas. Christmas is not a party. Christmas people go to the church, they pray, they do give it charity, and they celebrate a wonderful time with their family, and their friends, and they help people who they are poor. That is a Christmas. So what is the problem with this Christmas for the Muslim? The problem is that Christmas is invading every house in Islamic countries and they fear it to death. So they launch an attack, a huge attack on Christmas because since they have satellite, internet, TV, and people start seeing that people are happy in Christmas and Muslims, they have nothing in their life happy. So what we do, we launch an attack on Christmas. So if you are a Christian and you join the force of evil against Christmas, good for you. You must be following the devil Muhammad. Now I'm going to show you the hypocrisy of this dummy Abdul. I don't know if he look good with this. Uh, he don't deserve by the way this hat. This hat is for good, for fun, for fun, right? But those people do not know how to live happy. Their life is for muta, having sex with the children. I mean, they have a problem with the Christmas, but they don't have a problem with their prophet having sex with six years old girl. They have a problem with the Christmas where people do good only, but he have no problem with his prophet going and flirting with the house of his own son when she is married, in the house of the husband. He have a problem with the Christmas, it's pagan, but he have no problem with kissing a black stone. Or a prophet says, the one who touched the black stone, it forgave his sin, erase his sin. And yet they talk about us a pagan. He prayed in front of a stone, he bowed down in front of a stone, he kissed a stone, he go around the stone, and the Christmas is the problem. So I'm going to show you if we apply the logic of this guy on Islam, what will happen? Is that fair? I mean, those who have a logic, can't we use their logic? And this is why Muslims don't like me, by the way. I use their logic on Islam. And then they lose. Big time. So let us hear what this guy, what this Abdul, is going to say in his video. I cannot play the whole video, as you know, they would complain about copyright, so I will play just a little tiny part of it. You can watch the rest. I mean, in the whole the whole video is nothing talking about that the 25th of December was pagan, etc. You know, we will talk about it. Internet or, or in books about Christmas, they write that Christmas was not a part of the Christian faith. In fact, for four centuries, after Isa salam's ascension, for four centuries after Jesus, there was no such concept in Christianity. <laughs> yeah, you can go right now and search when the Christmas start will take you two seconds and you will find this guy is a fraud, as, again the same as his prophet. First of all, when you say celebrating Christmas was not exist in the first fourth century, this is a lie because they were celebrating since the third century. In the, in the beginning of the fourth, not four centuries, there is none, for a reason. Because the Christianity was discriminated and Christian being killed and 
crucified and even being fed into animals so how they can celebrate anything they were not even celebrating the easter can they celebrate anything it's underground belief it's underground faith in the year 313 it was the first time when christianity have their own freedom so how they can celebrate anything hey come kill me i'm going, i'm christian I'm celebrating hey i'm going to celebrate and then they will catch him and they will kill him so this coward he just said in fact in the first the first four centuries then if we go and check when the christmas started you will see that this is not what he said is not 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 true this guy is just a scam like he's a prophet we can go right now and search uh, the day but however i'm going to go with him if the first four centuries the christian did not celebrate christmas that make it bad have nothing to do with the christianity well isn't it the same for your prophet for the first four centuries or let us say the third century the same third century when you muslims start celebrating the birth of muhammad <laughs> did muhammad celebrate his birthday did he you see i'm using their logic in fact Christian, they did not, you know, you know, it's not recorded because it's not official. They cannot. They, they don't even have a leadership yet. In, but then the church organized. They became official. Now they have a priest and they have a bishop. So they can meet and discuss and decide. And now they announce, okay, this is the day we celebrate Christmas. Then he will go and he will speak about the 25th of December. The easiest answer for this, okay, if I search right now, let me do this in the front of you. Just to show you that the 25th of December is not really important for us as a Christian, as a date. Because they are trying to make it, but the date is the problem. Look. I just searched when the Orthodox Christmas will be. It is January 7. So that's mean the Christians, the 25th of December have nothing to do. It's not like, a, a, you know, a, a, okay, we copy the pagan and we make it the pagan day. We make it the Christmas day. This is not true. As you see, half of the church, this is half. The Orthodox, the empire actually divided to two empire. East and, uh, East and West. The Orthodox, they have a better calendar, I believe, from the Western calendar, better in everything, better in the, uh, in the Easter, better in the Christmas, better in everything. But for me, this is, that, doesn't, you know, the, the, the birth date is not really important. But here you will see that all the claim they made about the 25th of December, it used to be the light celebration day. My friend, your God Allah in the Quran, he says, I am the light. So you should celebrate the 25th of December then. If you are complaining about the light, that this is the day of the pagan, well, Allah himself, he say, I'm light. Trying to copy Jesus. But if we apply the same rule, this Abdul, he did use. That the first four centuries, which is not true, not accurate as a number, but we will go with it. Christian did not celebrate that. Question, why the Muslim did not celebrate the birth of Muhammad from the first century? They are not discriminated. They became an empire. The caliphate is in control. Tens of thousands of criminals raping, killing, torturing, taking over lands, owning tens of thousands of slaves. Who did, who did force you not celebrate? the birth of Muhammad. This is the official website of the Imam Ibn Baz. Now, if I say the Imam of Nibaz, this guy, he will look like a rabbit next to him. This is one of the biggest scumbag in the history of Saudi Arabia, a terrorist, big terrorist. Al-Imam Ibn Baz. The question here is, 
is a uh, is celebration the birth of the prophet is a bid'a hasana which is like a, 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 a bid'a is like a, let us say a, a heresy heresy you know but it's a good one is it a good one is it a good heresy <laughs> or a good uh, uh, false practice this is the question and then the sheikh he answer says well after he's praying on muhammad and his lips and his uh, arms and his legs and his bum as usual they have to pray in every uh, inch of him and his neighbors and his wives and etc then he come to the answer and he says الاحتفال بالمولد إنما حدث في القرون المتأخر متأخرة بعد القرون المفضلة <تصفيق> بعد القرن الأول والثاني والثالث <تصفيق> وهو من البدع. Let me translate. Celebrating in the birth of Muhammad is something happened in way last centuries after the first. Best centuries, because Muslims they believe there's a first centuries of Islam where Islam was good, and then Islam became rotten like Muhammad in his grave. And then, after the first and the second and the third, which means in the fourth, it happened. Wahwa min al bid'a. It is a fabrication. And the truth is, this is false. And celebration, all kind of birthday is false and bidah. It's a heresy. Let us translate into English. Because most of them might say, or oh, doesn't say that, maybe. Question. Is celebrating the prophet birthday a good fad? I'm not sure if fad is correct translation here. You tell me. And then the answer started. In the name of uh, Mr. Christopher, it says, and the word blessing on him, and Allah pray on him, not for him, etc. Blah, blah, blah. All of this is garbage. Okay? And may Allah bless his family, and blah, 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 blah. I mean, look, all of this just to praise the man Muhammad, and yet they say we don't worship him. Celebrating of a birthday occurred in the later centuries, after the preferred centuries, after the first and the second and the third century. <laughs> <laughs> so remember this guy was saying oh christian they should not celebrate it because actually it have nothing to do with the christianity it came in the fourth century and guess what his prophet birthday celebration came in the first century the fourth century But for us, we have a reason, because we were discriminated. Christianity was an accusation caused you to die. The punishment is death. So how they can celebrate anyway? So do you see how we can kill the rat in a few minutes? What is the rat? I don't see the rat. Is the rat is there? So the rat always he run away when the light come and the light come muslims celebrate birthday of muhammad and the birth of muhammad by the way is the most funny birthday ever because it happened in july it happened in december it happened in september it happened in october it happened in, in, in i mean it's all over the year why because the muslim they celebrate the pagan arab calendar have you ever heard of such a prophet have birthday in July and have birthday in September and then have birthday in December and then have birthday in January and then have birthday in February and then have a birthday in, in March? Let me do this. If I search right now, If I search right now, give me a second. Uh. 
<laughs> Look at this, guys. I just searched. I just I just searched. In the last four years, Muhammad is born in December first in two thousand seventeen. Muhammad is born in uh, Friday, Friday December uh, December first two thousand seventeen. Let me zoom in. <laughs> What a birthday! Hey, hey, prophet, what do you want me to to bring you next summer? Because last 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 few, ten years ago, your birthday was in winter. Okay, so in two thousand seventeen, his birthday was a Friday, December first. In the in, in two thousand eighteen, his birthday is Wednesday, November twenty first. <laughs> In the in 2019, his birthday is Saturday, November 9. Like what happened? He's going back. I mean, is it November 21st and now we go back? What happened? Okay. And then uh in 2020, his birthday brother in October 29th. If 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 and then shall we continue? Shall we continue? The list? Here we go. Look. In the year 2025, he will be September 5. 24, he will be September 16. 2023 is going to be September 27. 2022 is going to be October 8. 2021 is going to be October 19. Guess what? In the year 2015, his birthday was December 24th. Uh oh. Almost 25. Almost. Can you believe it, the stupidity of this Muta religion? The religion who rent women for one night stand and they call it marriage? Which day is the birthday of your prophet? And we find that they themselves they practice heresy and their scholars agree that this is false there is no such a birthday etc now we go back to christmas did the christians celebrate christmas in early time absolutely actually christmas celebrated in the time of jesus when he was in the credo when he was what in the credo if we go in the Bible to look, as an example, not limited. Luke 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste 
and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the we'll stop here, I mean to that. And you will see the cowards, they lie and they say Christmas was not there. And this is the angels of God coming to earth, celebrating and announcing the birth of the Messiah, inviting people to go and pay respect, and even they went and gave gifts. The angels of God celebrated the birth of Jesus. In the Bible, not in the fourth century, you coward. And now let me get you busted, son of Muta, from the Quran. In chapter 19, in the book of Yellow Pages of Muhammad, the fabrication book, he said that Mary, she have a son. And the son was a gift from God. Chapter 19, verse number 16. Relate in the book the story of Mary when she would draw from her, herself from her family to a place of East, which is very funny. I mean, the Quran, don't ask questions about the Quran. What does that mean? Nobody knows. I mean, what would it draw herself? What does that mean? Here you see the stupidity of Muhammad. He did not know that Mary, she was already engaged, which is considered as the same as married. So she did not need to hide. Otherwise, the Jews, they will stone her for doing what she did, if this is a son of adultery. But the stupid Muhammad do not know that. Anyway, so she placed a screen. Uh, she screened, that's it. If you screen yourself, nobody can see. And then, from then, then we sent to her our angel. It doesn't say angel, they are liars. It says our spirit, Ruhana. And the spirit of Allah appeared to her as a perfect man in every aspect. Well, in all respect. The spirit of Allah came to Mary to announce what? To announce Jesus. That is a Christmas in the Quran. When Muhammad, his mother, she was going to have him, did Allah send an angel to his mother, the infidel, his mother, the pagan mother, or to his pagan father? Did Allah send an angel to announce the birth of Muhammad? No. Are we following guys? Are we following people? This is the stupid Quran saying that their God in heaven, supposedly he's there. He rent five stars hotel in Las Vegas, in the pimp house, where the virgins and the whore are waiting and they have no panties, the house of Allah. Their God, he was so excited about the birth of Jesus, so he decided to send messengers who they are his spirit, and they went to Mary and to tell her, hey, hey Mary, guess what? I have a great news for you. Your God celebrating the birth of Jesus according to the Quran, you coward. Can you show me where your God celebrating the birth of Muhammad?
Y'a un lieu Is that the first century? Is that the second century? So here you see Muhammad trying to copy a story from the Bible, putting it in the Quran, confirming that Jesus is a gift from God, God himself celebrating Jesus, angels coming to tell about the birth of Jesus, and yet the birth of Jesus is not important for the Muslims. Do you see the cowards? Mary, she said to the Spirit of Allah, Ruh Allah, who became a man, I seek refuge from thee. You know, from the, in, in, if you are a person who fear Allah, by the way, it doesn't say fear Allah. I mean, Mary, she said fear Allah. <laughs> and then he say, Oh, nay, I am only a messenger from God. To thee, to announce to thee the gift of a holy son. People, this coward say there is no Christmas. So what is this? This is a service for Jesus. Christmas is service for Jesus. This was Christmas. Service for Jesus. Allah Himself is service, servicing Jesus. Hey Jesus, I'm going to go and tell your mother that you are going to be born and there is a great news of a person who is a holy son. Who is the holy son? Jesus. Is Muhammad a holy son? No. The Quran confirmed that he was a very bad person. And actually the Quran say literally, Muhammad was a sinner, bad sinner, to the point Allah, he said to him, may Allah forgive your sin. He's not sure even he can forgive his sin. While Jesus in his birth, he is a holy son. So what we saw right now? We saw in the Bible, there is a Christmas. People celebrating the birth of Jesus. Angels celebrating the birth of Jesus. Angels from heaven, not only mankind. Shepherd coming from far away to say, "Hey, we want to see the 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 the, 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 the newborn. Who is he? We want to celebrate that." Is that in the fourth century, or this is a day or two after Jesus was born? See how they lie to you? The question is, you need always to ask yourself a question. Why they hate the birth of Jesus? Muhammad, he hated Jesus. He is the enemy of Jesus. He is an antichrist of Jesus. Even in the Old Testament, before Jesus was even born physically from Mary, the Old Testament celebrate the birth of Jesus. If you go to Isaiah, we find this. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. and shall call his name Emmanuel. God is with us. His name is celebrated centuries before and centuries after. And his name is God is with us. So the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Quran, saying that Jesus God is with us. He is the Holy Son of God. If we ask the Muslim, Jesus is the Holy Son of who? They will say he's the son of Mary. Hold on. Who is his father? Oh, are you stupid? He have no father. But isn't it the Quran says, Call them by the name of their fathers. So what we will call Jesus? Who 
is the one who made Mary her son? They say, Allah. Well, the one who made my mother have me, he is my father. <laughs> who is the father of Jesus? I mean, and why Jesus have no father? They can't explain. Because the thief Muhammad, he is a thief. He is trying to establish a heresy, a fake religion, and the purpose is to attack Christianity. This is why Muhammad, he says, I am the eraser. Eraser, an al-mahi. And he mentioned he will erase Christianity. He will erase it. And then you will see after the, here, this verse number 19, when Mary, she gave birth to Jesus in the yellow pages of Muhammad, as the story says, she went under a palm tree. Most of you, you see uh, uh, movies, they make a movie about Jesus in uh, uh, in uh, in Israel, and you will see a palm tree. There's no palm trees. There, those are new. There's no palm tree. This is this is a joke. And you will see here something stupid. Mary, she is shaking a palm tree. I challenge ten men to shake a palm tree. Shaking palm tree, and why she go in the field? Can don't she have a room? I mean, a woman she want to give birth. She go under the palm tree, and suppose nobody there will see her. And when she get Hungry, she shake the palm tree. I can do that, you know. I can shake the palm tree, but by finger. <laughs> if it's a grape tree, I will believe you, man. But a palm tree, no problem. And then, when she was giving birth, a voice cried to her from beneath. Here they say the palm tree, saying. Uh, don't be sad, grieve not. The Lord He ever provided you, even Allah is serving Mary to eat. And what is the equation? Jesus' birth. Did Allah serve the mother of Muhammad to eat in the birth of Muhammad? According to some stories that when Muhammad's mother, she gave birth to him, a light came from her vagina, reached all the way to Damascus, but nobody saw it. Not even the uncle of Muhammad, nobody. Here we see that the mother of Jesus is being served by Allah. And then, and shake toward yourself the trunk of the palm tree, and fresh rip will fill date on you, whatever, okay. And then here you will see, when Mary, she gave birth and she take her babe. And I mean, and look how stupid the story. If the woman, she is trying to hide her shame for giving a babe without having a father, how she go back to the Jews who know her name, which means they know her, they knew she is not married, according to Muhammad's story. So what the purpose of hiding herself, going under the palm tree, if at the end of the day, you are going to take your baby and go to the Jews and the Jews will see her. What is that? Stupid story from a stupid prophet. And then they said to her, oh, sister of Aaron, here another stupid mistake. Muhammad, he think that Mary, she is the sister of Aaron, the sister of Moses. The Muslims got busted and Muhammad himself got busted in the time of Muhammad by a, a Jewish rabbi, he went to Aisha, he said to her, as I know, there's hundreds of years between Mary, Maryam, and uh, Aaron. She said to him, Kadabt, you're a liar, which means Aisha, she understood very well what Muhammad he meant. Then when Muhammad, he find out that he got busted, he said, oh, they used to call them by the great ancestors, but Aaron is not from the ancestor of Mary. He's not. He's not even from the tribe of Mary. This is why you see, when we speak about the lineage, we speak about the lineage of Mary all the way to David. Aaron is not there. And the Muslim, when you say, Muhammad, he answered that, we find another answer for this lie in chapter 3, where it says, Al Imran. According to the Quran, Mary, she is the daughter of Imran. According to Muhammad, 
Moses is the son of Amron. <laughs> How you can fix that now? Okay, Mary, she is called sister of Aaron by uh, because she is uh, the great prophet. But how come they have the same father now? The fraud Muhammad, he got himself busted. And all of us, we knew that the father of Mary had nothing to do with Imran. Why the Christian, they will change the name of the father of Mary and, he may, and they make it something different. Do we know Muhammad is going to change the name? Do we know that Muhammad is an idiot? He do not know really what, what name he will use. Why a Christian would change the name of the father of Mary? You tell me. I mean, what's the purpose of that? Even the name of the father of Mary, he could not quote it correctly. So when you go here, you will see that Mary, this, the daughter of Imran, and the wife of Imran, when Allah, he told them the news. <laughs> Imran, huh? Uh -huh. What a potato. The point. As you see, the Quran celebrating the birth of Jesus. Angels calling Jesus the Holy Son. Allah sending messengers to the wife of Amran, which is a stupid quotation, false name, Muhammad, he missed between Imram and Imran. Imram is the father of Moses. Even the name is not correct, even for the father of Moses. I mean, why even the Jews will change? I mean, the Jews and the Christians didn't agree anything. Okay, so we Christian and Jews, we agree that the father of, of Moses is Imran. How come? And Muhammad, he makes it Imran. It's a miracle. I mean, have you ever heard of a God? You do not know how to quote a name correctly because it's a Hebrew name. Muhammad, he did not know. He did not hear it clearly. So he thought it's Imran. They say Imran. He said Imran. Behold the woman of Imran. But Imran is the father of Moses. But here she is the mother of Jesus. Sorry, the mother of uh, uh, Mary. Excuse me. I'm wrong. Mary is from the children of Amran. That is, I challenge any dummy sheikh to tell us how this has happened. And then the story continue. We call her Mary. Christian Muslims, hey Muslims, what Maryam mean? They don't know. What Amran mean? They don't know. What Israel mean? They don't know. What Abraham mean? They do not know. What Isa mean? They do not know. For everything in this cult is a fraud. In this story here in chapter 3, it is a little bit different from chapter 19. It says here, in the other chapter 19, it says the Spirit of Allah came to her. Here it says angels came to her. Not the Spirit of Allah, not one. It says, while she, he, he was standing in the prayer, hmm? or came to, uh, to uh, sorry, he to, to Zechariah. Let us go a little bit. Uh, this is about Zechariah, sorry, here. Here we go. This is about Maryam. Behold, the angels say to Mary, O, o Mary, Allah has chosen thee and purified thee, chosen thee above the women of all nations. Look, guys, Allah don't care for the birth of Jesus, but he purified Mary. She is a pure as holy. She is a holy temple. Why God of Islam is purifying Mary? For one purpose, Jesus. That is the Christmas. That God himself, you Muslims should celebrate the Christmas for God himself purifying Mary for one reason, Jesus. You see how important his birth is? Did Allah send angels? Did Allah purify the mother of Muhammad? Preparing the birth of Muhammad? 
Now, and yet they say to us lying that Muhammad is way more important. But as you see, angels, the spirit of Allah, Allah sending messengers, telling her Mary, get ready, I purify you, and I chosen you above all women of all nations, which means above all women, including the mother of Muhammad. She was a chosen. Here Muhammad is trying to copy from the Bible that Mary is a special person. She is a pure person for very simple reason, which is Jesus. And then they said to her, who? The angels come in, team of angels. The house is full of angels coming to celebrate the great news about Jesus. Behold, the angels said to Mary, Oh Mary, Allah has given you glad tidings of word from him. He is the word of God. The word of God became a man. Is Muhammad the word of God? No, he's not. His name is a Christ, not will be. They lie in the translation. His name is a Christ for he already exists. And the proof is here. You can copy just to get them busted with the tr false translation. His name is the Messiah, not his name will be. Coward liars. His name is the Christ, Jesus. He have honor in this world and hereafter. He speak when he is a child, and this is a story they could take it from Bibles wouldn't approve, but however, no problem. But there is something unique about the Christ story. Muhammad the liar, he had to use the name of Jesus in order to deceive, as Satan he do. Satan, he tried to come to you in all doors, whatever door you like. You like drinking, he come to you. You like sex, he come to you. You like money, he come to you. You like Jesus, he come to you too. He try his best. That's why the Bible says, be aware of false teachers and false prophets like Muhammad. In the Quran, in chapter 19, verse number 33, it says that Jesus said, and he said that, when he was supposedly a child. A child in the cradle, he's a baby, he's the one day old, he's not even two hours old. The Jews, they came to her and they say, oh, sister of Aaron, your father was not man of evil and your mother, she was not a hooker, not unchaste, bariya, hooker, a whore. But she pointed to the babe. They said, how can we talk? to the one who is a child in the cradle. He said, Jesus, I am indeed the servant of Allah. He has given me revelation and made me a prophet. <laughs> and then he continued, and he had made me blessed. He made me blessed. Wherever I am, Wherever I am, I'm blessed. This is in your Quran. Can you have better a Christmas than this? If this is true? That Jesus in the cradle, I mean, this is the birth, birth the, the, the most wonderful birth ever we heard a story about. A child in the cradle saying, I am a prophet. I'm serving supposedly the one they call him Allah God, and I have revelation. He is just born. Muhammad, he waited 40 years, and then the angel came to him and he squeezed in three times. No mayonnaise came out. And after three times, Mr. Muhammad did not know what's happening. He went to his wife. His wife, she take him like a baby to her cousin, the cousin of the cousin, and then he told her, tell me the story. He told him the story. And then he, after he told him the story, he said, ah, oh, this is an angel. His name is Jabrul. His name is Juju. While your prophet was confused, like a mad cow, have coronavirus, Jesus in the child, he is in the cradle, his wise person, speaking the wisdom of God, 
He being called the Word of God and the Spirit from Him, proceeding from Him. And He is blessed wherever He is. Not like Muslims, they need to pray for Muhammad. They say, oh, when we say pray to Muhammad, we are asking Allah to send a blessing. Muhammad, Jesus, before he was born, he is blessed wherever he is. Muhammad, you need your prayer, huh? And then Jesus said, Peace, so peace is on me. The day I was born, the day I die, and the day I shall raised up to life. That is a Christmas. The day Jesus was born, there was peace on earth. And this is what the Bible says. Peace on earth. Because of what? Because of the birth of Jesus. Then a funny Abdul, he will say to you, Jesus said, I came not with peace, but by sword. Coward liars, they're a prophet, like thy prophet. Read the continue in the verse. It says, People will kill us, not the opposite. Jesus killed no one. In verse number 14, in the chapter of in Luke, chapter 2, it says, Glory to God the highest, and on earth peace. Why? Because of Jesus. For into you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, which is a Christ, your Lord, the Lord. And they say to you, where Jesus says, I'm God, and where the Bible says, Jesus is God, and where it says, celebrate the Christmas, this is a Christmas, this day. So my friends, Refuting Muslims is as easy as smashing a very well-cooked potato. Your problem is you are not educated. So those who send me a video saying, answer this guy, answer this guy, why you don't do it? Why you don't learn? I spend all my day making hours of videos. Why you cannot do it? What's wrong with you? This is the most stupid religion ever. Those people kiss stones, worship a stone, go around the stones, and yet they call you pagan. Are you? I mean, still you do not know what to say to them. Those people believe by touching stones that forgive their sin, and yet still you are, you, are, you are wondering what I will say to them. They are saying we are pagan. We are the pagan. When Muhammad, he said that those stones, they erase your sin by touching them. Who is the pagan? Huh? Oh, Abdul, Abu Abdul Rahman, <laughs> Abu Abdul Rahman Khabibi, why do you only I see you touching those two, two corners? Uh, those corners, there's black stone and the Yemeni corner. The Yemeni corner, they have some stones from the temple of Al Makkah, which is the moon god temple. He said, I heard. I heard the messenger of Allah says, touching them erase sin. Touching them erase sin. And yet they are saying pagan. Since when stones erase sin? And since when touching stones erase sin? Those who they are attacking Christmas, they are cowards. For Christmas made them feel guilty. The coming of Christ made them feel dirty. They hate Christ. Follower of Muta Prophet, they cannot handle to see the world is rejoicing and enjoying Jesus. People of a stone kissing. Stone kissing prophet follower. 
Enjoy the holy stone, which is your prophet said, it is the right hand of Allah. Have you ever heard of a God, his right hand is a stone? And Muhammad make it more funny. He said the stone is going to witness for you in the judgment day. And then uh, uh, Umar al Khattab, he made it more funny. He got Muhammad busted. He says, huh, you know what? I know that this stone is useless and harmless. I mean, you're, there's no benefit from it and there's no harm from it. But just because the Prophet kissed our kiss, look how hypocrite they are. Look how hypocrite they are. The guy, he knew that this is a scam. It's a fraud. It's useless stone. Just because the Prophet kiss it, I will kiss you. But shouldn't you ask him why I should kiss it? Have you ever heard of such a stupid cult? The hypocrite, he want to be a caliphate later. So he said, let us do what this guy do soon. He will die. I will take the all, all, all the, all, all the, the, the the gold and the silver and the women so we can rape. I know you are a useless stone. I know that you are a pagan stone. Just because the prophet kissing you, I'm going to kiss it. Then why the prophet is kissing it if it is useless stone? And why you Muslims go in front of it and you cry? <laughs> And why Muhammad said that the black stone is going to erase your sin if you touch it? If it's used as a stone, which one of them is lying? Either Omar is lying or Muhammad is lying. But we knew the answer. Obviously, Omar is saying the truth. It's used as a stone. It's not the right hand of God. It does not witness. It's a stone. I can accept if it's metaphorical, but Muhammad, he made it clear, is going to have eyes and tongue, is going to speak, and Muslims themselves agree that the stone is going to talk in the day of judgment, and none of them, he says, this is metaphorical. So my friends, those who attack Christmas, we laugh at them. And I feel sorry for you. We have a Christmas, you have nothing. Even when you celebrate, The birthday of your prophet, and we showed you the fatwa from the website of Ibn Baz himself. Even when you do that, it is bid'ah. A bid'ah means bid'ah al kuffar. You are a kafir who worship a stone, kiss a stone, bow to a stone, go around the stone, and even when you fight shaitan, you throw a stone. Even, even here the guy is saying, those who celebrate the birth of the Prophet Muhammad, Allah spoke about them in this verse. Let me show you this verse so we can laugh together. Yet all the Muslims in Indonesia, all the Muslims in Pakistan, all the Muslims, wherever they celebrate the birthday of Muhammad, based on jealousy of us having Jesus. Look what he's saying. Those who do celebrate the birthday of Muhammad, they have taken partners. You are a mushrik. You are a kafir. You are a pagan. Even your scholars, they name you as that way. I hope we did answer. I don't want to make it so long. It's already long. So please download the video, share it. I notice not many of you is downloading the videos. And you know, like, yes, I don't care how many people really uh, 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 help, but I say shame on you. Honestly, I say shame on you. Honest to God, I say shame on you because they are targeting you, not me. I'm the last one. I'm the last one to be affected by this garbage. They are targeting your kids. They want to fool your kids. One day your son, he will go to school or your daughter and she will meet a Muslim or will meet a Muslim and they will lie to them and he will come back to your home and say, become an Abdul, shame on you. I'm trying to save your children. Not mine, I don't have any. I'm the last one they can fool and convert to Islam. If there's no men left in this earth, I will be the last one to convert to this garbage. 
So shame on you not to do your work. Shame on you not to download my videos. Not to save them, not to share them. I'm risking my life to save your children. Enjoy the Christmas. Merry Christmas. Joy and peace in this earth, in the name of Jesus. His name is holy. His act is holy. His teaching is wonderful. His, he is a miracle. Even his birth is a miracle. You see, everybody, prophet had miracle. Jesus himself is the miracle. Are you listening, Muslims? Jesus himself is the miracle. Not only he did amazing miracle, he raised people from the grave, he made the blind see, he can tell you even what you hide. He can heal the leper. He can make the blind see. And right now he is up in heaven. We are followers of the living Messiah. You are following of the dead Allah. Otherwise, I challenge you, Allah, to reveal himself and make a miracle. In the time of Muhammad, they keep asking Muhammad, give us just... Why he don't give us just one miracle? The Muslim they say, Oh, the moon is split in the Quran. It doesn't say that, you idiot. It doesn't say that Allah did a miracle. It says the moon is split and judgment day is near. Which means Muhammad, he gave again false prophecy. He see the eclipse. He claimed that this is the sign of the judgment day. In chapter 2, verse 118, it says, uh, They said to Muhammad, I mean, how come he don't give us a sign from his God? Miracle, give us a miracle. And then Allah, he said to them, oh, you know what? Uh, people before you, they said the same. They will not believe. So Allah, he will not give miracle to Muhammad. <laughs> so why, why did he give miracle to Jesus? Don't you know that the people who follow Jesus supposedly will be deceived anyway? So you support Jesus with miracles, tons of miracles, but Muhammad, you will not give him any? And then, the Quran says it clearly. Ma manana. Ma manana. Nothing refrain us from sending miracles, chapter 17, verse number 59, except people of former generation do not believe in them. So the Quran confirmed that Muhammad has zero miracle. He refrained from sending signs. And the excuse is, former generation treated them as false, which is a false statement, because the Jews until now, they believe in Musa's miracle and all the prophet. And the Christian, they believe in all the prophet or, or, or in, the, in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So Muhammad is a fraud. He have no excuse to say that his God refrained from giving sign because people believe in it false, because simply, that's not true. That's not true. As you see, even us and Muslim, we believe that Mary, she was a virgin. So how that former generation treated him as false? We and Muslim, we believe Jesus made the blind see. We and Muslim believe that Jesus made the one who was dead alive. So how you say former generation treated them as false, you liar? Because his God is fake, he could not do it. As if I am making myself a prophet of God, and then people say to me, hey, uh, Christian, uh, give us a miracle if you are uh, from God. He say, oh my God, refrain, because you will not believe me anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I want to say thank you for being here. Don't forget to download the video and subscribe to our channel. Not necessarily here. Go to Patreon and subscribe because we post there always when we go live. So you will be updated. And you see, I speak against Islam, but I am not against Muslims. We love Muslims. We will never hate them. But we hate lies. We hate lies and we hate deceivers. Those sheikhs are scumbags, liars, and they are fraud and they are not decent. Because if Christmas is a problem for you, according to you, it's pagan, and you have no proof of that, except you're saying December 25th. Well, as you see, Christians, some Christians celebrate in January 7. So, so the 25th of December is not really important. And we celebrate the birth of Jesus, and we showed you that Muhammad's birthday, sometime in June, just 2016, 15, Muhammad's birthday was December 25th.
So we are victorious and they cannot refute us. And I challenge, please Muslims, tell this guy, if he have the guts, if he have the courage, if he is a man, coming from the backbone of his father as his Quran claim. I don't think he is coming from the backbone of his father. I think he came from his nose. I think he's a booger. And we are going to clean the booger. So if you are not a booger, prove me wrong. And it challenged me in debate. And don't tell me face to face. I will call you. Give me your Skype. And I will show everybody that you know nothing about your religion. And you are a fraud. And by the way, you look very good with the hat. And he was saying, do you see the hat in my head? Christian Prince, he made me wear it. I hope you enjoy it as a gift from me. You can tell your wife that what happened in Vegas is staying in Vegas. I mean, what happened in the heaven of Allah, stay in the heaven of Allah. All right. So anyway, guys, thank you very much. Don't forget to download the video. I don't keep them for long. I will give you a few hours, maybe until the morning, and then I will take them down. The one, this, this one and the one previous one. Download them, share them, cut them pieces, do whatever you want. You can make them short as you wish. No problem. Thank you very much for being with us. May the Lord bless you. And... Uh, uh, we pray to the Muslim to see the truth and the truth will set them free remember never hate the Muslims they need your help those liars are deceiving them they are doing business and they will pay for their crimes against God judgment day is coming but don't hate Muslims don't be the same as they do love the Muslims share the Christmas with them if you have a neighbor he is a Muslim tell him Merry Christmas he like it like it he don't like it we love them still we don't say it to insult them we say it because we love them. So Merry Christmas, Muslims. Merry Christmas, Jews. Merry Christmas, Christians. Jesus Christ is our Savior. He is our Lord, the King of Kings. You like it, you don't. You've been defeated. This is your brother, Christian Prince. Wish you a great time with your family and your friends. Pray for the Muslims. Pray for the salvation of all mankind. And I pray that the Lord forgive us for our sin. We claim no holiness of ourselves. We claim no perfection. We not, don't claim to be saint. We don't claim to be prophet. We don't claim to be anything. I'm just a normal man. And may God forgive me for my sin. But I will never accept a lie of Muhammad and about my Jesus, my Lord. And I'm here to fight the devil. I will never accept people making lies about Jesus. And I'm going to get them busted. I'm not a bishop, I'm not a priest, I don't claim to be sheikh like this guy who is making his, you know, this is what he do for a living, you know, sheikh, grow a beard, say stupid things, and then you get support. We got you busted. Let's see, let us see if this guy, he had the guts to say, okay, I'm going to debate you. Any question, no topic, live debate, and I will never hang up on you, and I will never call your name, and I will never insult you, unless you insult Jesus. Do you dare? You don't. You are just a kid who lost his mustache. Glory to the Lord. They've been defeated. And now watch the comment of the Muslims. And you will see how upset they are. Watch how angry I made them. And that is glorifying our work. The more angry they get upset, the more we are successful because we are ashamed the truth. And the truth makes them angry and then they leave Islam. Thank you. God bless you. If you like to learn more, you can read my books. You can find them in Amazon. And if you are a person who speaks languages, we have made my books in many languages for free. Indonesian, Albanian, Croatian, Serbian, Russian, uh, uh, I don't know, like many, you know, you name it. So thank you for your support. Thank you for being with us. May the Lord bless you all. Merry Christmas. And God is good. And he is the Messiah, our Lord. Take care. Bye-bye.